Hi and welcome. In today's video, we are going to see how we can handle mood point environments or profiles on our Spring Boot application. It's a daily basis stuff to handle mood point environments during the backend development, right? So we have like the local environment, which is the, the one running on, on our PC or laptop or whatever. Um, we have the development environment, we have the staging or QA environment, and also we have obviously the production environment. Before I start coding, we need to make sure that we understand what environment means, right? Environment is the place where your application runs. Your application normally doesn't need to know where it is running, but it needs to be configured by that environment. In other words, I don't need to have a conditional like, or oh, if, if I'm running on production, I need to use this data source. And in case I am using, I am running on development environment, I need to use this other data source. This kind of logic, like this L if, else, and sweet case, whatever you, you want to, to think about, it doesn't belong to the application itself. The application is just a component under an environment, okay? So yeah, we need to know exactly which database we, on, we need to use on each environment but not this way what we need actually is the environment to say to us which connection we need to use for that specific environment so we, we don't need like conditioning stuff there are some hard cases that we need that but really but for real normally we don't need that at all so let's see how we can handle that without this conditioning and making our application environment agnostic Okay, so I created a new Spring Boot application from Spring Initializer site. Uh, I just added the Spring Web uh, started, but actually this is just for example. It doesn't belongs to the Web Starter. It belongs the this kind of environment stuff belongs to the Spring Boot itself. Uh, on Spring Boot, it, the environment is called more likely Profile. Okay. So let's make a simple, really, really simple stuff here. So let's think about that database example, right? Uh, normally on Spring Boot application, when we have to, when we need to handle external configurations, we normally do that using the application.properties or application YAML file, right? So we can define like Spring data data service uh, URL, for example, data service username, and so on. So I wouldn't be using uh, databases here to avoid because it would be very complicated. Uh, I would need to host multiple <laughs> databases only for this video. But let's think about instead of having like spring data source URL like uh, JDBC, uh, whatever, like localhost, uh, 5 uh, and so on. Let's think about having app um running environment okay and for this i am using localhost okay so this is just a property a custom property which says which environment it is running so you can think as the same as the data source okay but it's not the data source it's just for simplify okay so let's add um our controller here Um, okay, just the regular annotations, nothing new here. Um, let's say like running, and then uh, we can response entity of something yet and then we can return something response entity of map of oh my bad okay of like environment localhost okay let's see if it works
so let's see if it works like aims running and it says localhost okay um but this is not part of the code right this is exactly what we were talking about like your code doesn't should not know which environment it is running right so let's externalize that into application properties file to differentiate that to differentiate and these i will just like um from properties file okay um let's get these and inject that here right by value annotation again this just this is just an example call envy and then pass it here and let's run once again mm -hmm. and yeah localhost from properties file uh, so how we can manage mood point environments on my spring boot application let's say we have the development environment so here we would be connecting to our localhost right so how can we connect to our development environment, for example? It's pretty simple, actually. The, actually, we have multiple ways to achieve that on Spring, but the way I'm going to show you guys is the one that I truly think is the best way. It is by having multiple application properties file. By that, you just type on hyphen and the name of the environment you want. This name is important, okay? It doesn't need to be dev. It, it can be whatever if you want, like whatever. But this would be, this is a key, right? That you'll be using in a second. So let me copy that. Oh, Envy, not Envy, Dev, right? So let me copy that and pretty cool. So no more uh, localhost, but development now, right? Cool. Uh, how would our application know which environment it is running it's running on my local right so let me just run again because it's running on my local right so just to make sure yeah it is running on my local so let's say i will run this application on the development environment on my kubernetes or aws or whatever or even and that's the point even on our local how can i say i am the development environment that's a good question right so here under the run configurations on intellij you can pass an environment variable that tells the spring which environment it is the, this application is running so do you remember that key i said that dev stuff would be a key so just let me copy this environment variable name because i don't remember uh this is a very interesting site <laughs> So let me just go with that by this. This is the environment variable. I am passing here because this is the way IntelliJ works, but like you're running on a terminal, you just need to declare this environment variable and run your application, it will be the same. So I will say dev, okay? Super cool. Let me run once again. Uh, let's try it. And voila, we have development environment, right? And I don't know if you noticed, but in the beginning, it says the following one profile is active. Do you remember the profile stuff? It is here, right? So this is how Spring calls the environment in this context, okay? So whenever I don't pass this, let me remove that. It says no active profile set falling back to one default profile default which one is default the one that doesn't have the suffix right with the environment so to exemplify a little more let's get this and as i said we can call it whatever right so i will do that here here and here let me just copy once again and let's see and yeah 
the following one profile is active, whatever. Right, so again, the name of the environment doesn't need to match any of these dev, dev or staging, QA, production, prod, PRD. It doesn't matter at all. It's just a key that you'll be using here that needs to match here, okay? You can also pass this uh, configuration spring profiles active using command line arguments, okay? But it's up to you. And now let's say, oh, okay, but we here at my company, we don't use dot properties. We use dot YAML. No problems. You are covered. So let's add like um, application, oh, application dev YAML. And yeah, for that, let me just copy the same property, right? So instead of dot is this, 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 and this is development from YAML, right? Um, let me get this and do the whatever. And this time it is whatever. Also from the development, you need to get rid uh, from the of the other ones. Otherwise, Spring would not start obviously because it doesn't know how to which one to choose. Uh, let me drop it anyways, and let's see which one we were using. Whatever, I am running with the whatever once again. Let's see, and now we have the whatever from YAML, okay? One other way to achieve that is by using a single YAML with all the environments on it. I, in my opinion, I don't like that. I will just show you guys, but I don't like that. I think this is too confusing when you have like huge configuration files. So let's say we have, in this example, we just have one attribute, one configuration. Let's say we have like 40 configurations so and you have uh, three environments plus development so plus local so we have four four environments four times 40 160 attributes so i don't like that at all but i will show you guys anyways for that we have some very specific uh, stuff let me copy from this awesome blog here so we need to infer to spring which profile is active by default because we don't have the default anymore remember that one like because this would be the default right the default is without the the suffix right so as we are going to have just this one and all the environments under it we need to say to Spring which one is the default, okay? Uh, so here we can use this, right? And then here is likely, oh, if it is running on the dev, consider this block, okay? So for this block, I will get this from single YAML, okay? and i will copy that and here uh, on profile whatever it will be whatever from a single yaml okay let's see if it works that's it okay so yeah that's all for today's video uh, i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, ding, and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. And that's it. See you. Bye bye.